Hello again, Old School Ben. Last time I covered Tony Hawk's Pro Skater for the PlayStation, the golden boy of skateboard video games in the late 90s. The game did for the skateboarding genre what Super Mario Bros. did for platformers on the NES a decade before. During the subsequent years after its release, the PlayStation was swarmed with copycat games looking to cash in on the success of THPS and ride the uptrend of skateboarding's popularity. Standing among the armada of cheap ripoffs, cash grabs, and clones is a game that would successfully emulate the Tony Hawk formula and even make an attempt to expand it. The game in question is of course Grind Session. The story of Grind Session is an interesting one as it was the first game released and developed by Shaba Games, a small studio founded in 1997 in San Francisco, California. Grind Session hit the scene in the spring of 2000, months before Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 would be released by Neversoft. In the interval between THPS games, Grind Session would define itself as a possible contender against the franchise and would have been capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the series if it ever had a sequel. Unfortunately, Activision must have seen the small game developer as a threat because by 2001, they had already acquired Shaba Games and had them working on a port of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX on the PlayStation. You see, this is how Activision, a massive publisher of games, deals with its problems. Instead of competing in an open market over who has the better game, Activision would acquire small game development teams that otherwise would have designed a product that could compete with its own franchises. Remember in my first video when I sadly lamented the lack of a Thrasher Presents Skate and Destroy sequel? The sequel to Skate and Destroy never happened because one year later, in 2002, Activision had acquired the team behind the game, Z-Axis. In the end, games like Skate and Destroy and Grind Session never had a chance to compete against the Tony Hawk franchise. Activision had ensured the success of their line of skateboarding games by buying out their competitors and using their developers to make more Tony Hawk games. When I think back, we could have had so many more awesome gaming experiences had these smaller game studios had a chance to blossom. To Activision's credit, the Tony Hawk's Pro Skaters franchise did continue to grow and I believe the acquired developers had much to do with this growth. Shaba would go on to develop Tony Hawk's Underground Remix 2 for the PSP and the PlayStation 2's port of Tony Hawk's Project 8. Alas, these would be Shaba's last efforts in making lovable skateboarding experiences as Activision would ultimately axe Shaba in 2009, having this to say. Activision continually evaluates the resources at our studio properties to ensure that they are properly matched to our product slate and overall strategic goals. As part of this process, we recently made the difficult but necessary decision to close Shaba Studios. We are grateful for the studio's contributions and wish this talented team success in their future endeavors. Grind Session was obviously inspired by the Tony Hawk series and, in an ironic twist of fate, ultimately became part of it, only to be bled dry all at the whim of mighty Activision. The game was published by Sony Computer Entertainment of America and thus was exclusive to the PlayStation. The game plays very similar to the first Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, being one of the only games to fake the funk and get away with it. That being said, the controls are a tad clunkier than those in Neversoft's game, but it never seems to be a huge problem. Playing through all these skateboarding games has taught me to accept each game as its own entity. In this instance, since Grind Session successfully emulates THPS, I feel like it's a safe comparison. Grind Session just seems a bit stiff and is a constant reminder that you are not playing a Tony Hawk game, just a game that wants to be THPS with every ounce of its soul. Don't worry, Grind Session, you'll be a real boy one day. What Grind Session lacks in control fluidity, it more than makes up for with its selection of skateboard tricks. Different button combos would produce different tricks adding much more variety to the game. I can easily say that Grind Session has one of the deepest bag of tricks in any skateboarding game on the PlayStation and even allows you to manual to string tricks together before the Tony Hawk franchise would introduce manuals in their game. The lineup of professional skateboarders in Grind Session are just as impressive with Daywon Song being the poster boy of the game, gracing the cover of the North American release. The game also features a legendary John Cardiel, Willie Santos, Ed Templeton, Kara Beth Burnside, and Pigpen. There are also many unlockable characters in the game, including former Big Brother editor Dave Carney. You gotta love skateboarding for its diversity. Each skater has their own trick set, but the levels play the same regardless of who you pick. The game has both challenge levels and competition levels. I imagine you know the difference by now. I struggled with placing first in some of the competitions, and many of the challenges had to be revisited as you acquire better stats and become more familiar with the game. If you play Tony Hawk's Pro Skate, 
navigator, you should adapt quickly and may even be in for a few surprises. Completing all the challenges in the game will give you a key which unlocks a room in the secret level, the Dream House. The Dream House is a fancy mansion that is completely skatable and each key unlocks a new room in the mansion. It's one of my favorite levels in the game and it serves as a trophy of your accomplishments in beating the game. While progressing through the game, you will unlock even more tricks by completing challenges. Cheaters will basically say fuck this and use the following code to unlock all tricks from the get-go. The first thing you gotta do is pause the game, then press down left up right, down left up right. This will give you the ability to perform any trick, but it won't make you a better skater. Completing the game will also give you more silly characters to pad the game's length and add replayability. One game mechanic that stands out and sets Grind Session apart is the ability to give yourself more time. Normally, you are given 3 minutes to complete the assigned task in each level, however, completing certain challenges such as jumping a gap or grinding a long rail will give you extra time if done correctly. This essentially allows you to complete even more challenges as you continue to play. It's really a creative idea you wouldn't see in future skateboarding games and is unique to Grind Session. Another unique addition is Skater View. Holding L2 will allow you to get off your board and look around the 3D environments. On the PlayStation, when 3D gaming was just getting its feet wet, this was an awesome feature that allowed you to look around and bask in the polygonal, pixelated glory of your environment. This is a feature that would be reintroduced in future skateboarding games when analog sticks would be used to control both the skater and the camera. Speaking of your environments, this game has over 8 levels, each with its own unique challenges. The game clones THPS in more than just the obvious as the Burnside level is essentially the same between the two games. What Grind Session does do differently is the soundtrack. Unlike THPS, Grind Session has a healthy mix of hip-hop, alternative rock, and punk rock, but just like any other PlayStation game of the time, you will get sick of hearing the music, even if it's really good. KRS-One, NoFX, Sonic Youth, Black Flag, Jurassic 5, and the Jizza. This game has something for everybody. I strongly believe that music plays an instrumental role in setting the tone in the medium of video games, and skateboard video games are no different. The soundtrack is one of the things this game does absolutely brilliantly and contributes greatly to the flavor of the game. If imitation is the highest form of flattery, Neversoft must have been tickled pink at the sheer waves of games that followed in the wake of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Of these games, copycats, clones, whatever you want to call them, Grind Session is arguably the best. The game looks good, plays good, and sounds great. I highly recommend the game, so give it a play if you find it for PlayStation. The game can also be found on PlayStation Network as a download and has been upscaled to be played in HD. Look high and low and you still won't find a suitable Tony Hawk's Pro Skater alternative that plays better than Grind Session. As stated before, Grind Session did not have a sequel, but most gamers would be familiar with the concept of a spiritual successor. If you read into this concept, Grind Session did in fact have a successor, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 for the PlayStation. Sure, the game had Tony Hawk's Pro Skater right there in the title, but it was a Shaba developed skateboarding game. As was Tony Hawk's Underground 2 Remix and Tony Hawk's Project 8 for the PS2. Don't get me wrong, I realize that these were all sleazy ports in the Tony Hawk franchise, but they vary from their Neversoft developed brothers. I consider them to be part of Shaba's 12 year legacy. There's not much else I can say about Grind Session. It's a fantastic game, so definitely give it a try if you get the chance. Hey everybody, I'd like to use this as an opportunity to thank everybody out there who's given me a chance and taken the time to check out some of my videos. Please like and subscribe, and feel free to leave a comment in the comments section. Also keep an eye out because I've got more videos planned for 2017 and I can't wait to see you there. Happy New Year!